Okay, welcome everyone to a new episode of Myth Bust Monday, where every Monday we're gonna take a look at some popular fitness or nutrition idea, look at where that idea got started, and then figure out whether it's true or false based on the most recent scientific evidence. So this week we're gonna be looking at the idea that foam rolling enhances recovery from training. Um, so first, where did this idea come from? Well, I think it's important to first note that foam rolling is itself a form of manual therapy. Um, you can sort of think of it like a self-massage. And while some forms of manual therapy have their roots in ancient India and China, the practice of foam rolling itself is somewhat more recent. In the 1980s, practitioners of the so-called Feldenkraz method, and in my opinion, now debunked form of physical therapy, started using foam rollers to increase body awareness. And through the late 1980s and 1990s, the secret of foam rolling got out, mostly thanks to the Broadway star Jerome Robbins, who started using it on ballet dancers he was overseeing. And it wasn't until the late 1990s that word got out to the weightlifting community, when physical therapist Mike Clark began writing about the benefits of foam rolling, which eventually were put together in his 2001 text, Integrated Training for the New Millennium. Three years later, in 2004, the first foam roller patent was filed by Los Angeles-based physical therapist Stacy Barrows, and shortly thereafter, it started showing up in the scientific literature, which is where we're gonna start in this video. Um, so what does the scientific research have to say about foam rolling and recovery? Well, I think before we can answer that question, it's important to first understand what it is we mean by recovery in this context. A 2010 article on overtraining defines it as a multi-level process in time for re-establishment of performance abilities. So basically recovery time just refers to how long it takes your body to sort of get back to normal after a training session. And there are a bunch of different ways that researchers try to measure this. Um, one popular way is to simply assess levels of muscle soreness, which they usually use a visual analog scale to do. Basically they have a 10 centimeter line and subjects are asked to make a mark anywhere along that line indicating their soreness levels. And some studies, in my opinion, have kind of botched this. One 2017 study instead asked subjects to rank their soreness on a scale of one to seven where each number corresponds to a rating of either, say, sore, very sore, or very, very sore. And so while this study did find that foam rolling reduced average soreness scores in soccer players from a 5.6 to a 4.8 average, honestly, I don't personally see the practical significance here. Um, it just seems a little bit too subjective to me uh, to have subjects try to discriminate between, say, very sore or very, very sore. Um, so while I wouldn't necessarily write off the results of this study altogether, together, um, I would probably take them with somewhat of a grain of salt. However, an earlier 2014 study from McDonald and colleagues out of Memorial University of Newfoundland found that when subjects performed 10 sets of 10 reps on the squat and then either received 20 minutes of foam rolling or no treatment after the training session, ratings of muscle soreness gauged on a scale of 1 to 10 were lower at 24, 48, and 72 hours post-training for the foam rolling group. And this led the authors to conclude that foam rolling was beneficial in attenuating muscle soreness. The same basic study design was replicated a year later in 2015 by the same research group, except this time using the perhaps slightly more objective pressure pain threshold method rather than the one to 10 rating scale, where this time the researcher would apply pressure to the muscle using a calibrated device that measures force. And the subject would just say yes the moment they started to feel pain instead of just pressure. So a higher force reading would correspond with lower soreness in this case. And again, 20 minutes of foam rolling post-exercise was shown to reduce soreness at all time points after training. Not only that, this study also boasted improvements in some performance measures, including improved 30 meter sprint time, which may further suggest enhanced recovery from foam rolling. But before we take these results and run with them, I'd like to take a look at a more recent 2017 study investigating the effect of foam rolling on recovery from high volume sprint training. Using a zero to 100 scale, they assessed muscle soreness. And in contrast to the previous studies, they found no significant differences between the groups. And the authors of this study speculated that the differences between this present study and the earlier research that we just looked at uh, could be due to the presence or absence of a dynamic warm-up routine. And they noted that measurements of muscle soreness in the recovery period of the present study were always preceded by a warm-up, whereas those earlier studies assessed perceptions of muscle soreness upon entry to the lab prior to any activity. The warm-up period utilized in the present study may have served to reduce soreness in both groups 
and possibly offset any further influence that foam rolling exerted. So perhaps a five to 10 minute dynamic warm up with a focus on just increasing body temperature, uh, improving blood flow to the muscles and taking the joints through their full range of motion may be just as effective as a foam rolling routine. Uh, however, in my personal opinion, as a, a strength and physique athlete, I think I'd put a little bit more stock in those earlier studies that used the 10 sets of 10 on the squat rather than uh, 40 bouts of 15 meter sprints or 30 meter sprints, uh, just because that sort of resembles my own training uh, a little bit better. Um, so I think it's a little bit more applicable to those of us who are doing more highly damaging, high volume resistance training. Now, another purported benefit of foam rolling is that it improves mobility and improves range of motion. And in fact, in support of this, a 2015 systematic review analyzing 14 studies found that self myofascial release with a foam roller or roller massager appears to have short-term effects on increasing joint range of motion without negatively affecting muscle performance. And I think this is important because the other really popular method of improving mobility and flexibility, namely prolonged static stretching, has been shown to decrease strength and decrease performance if done before training. Um, so with foam rolling, you basically get the benefit of potentially improving range of motion without the drawback of decreasing your strength. But even here, the jury still seems to be out with regard to mobility and range of motion. As in 2015, a paper from Vygotsky and colleagues concluded that it's unlikely that foam rolling will do much for improving range of motion if performed in combination with dynamic stretching. Um, so then pooling all of these results together, I think that what we're left with is the question of whether or not foam rolling is effective and if it is effective, is it more effective than what it may be potentially replacing? Um, so things like a general warm up, dynamic stretching, and an effective cool down. And from my scan of the literature, uh, I'm thinking probably not. Uh, it seems to be the case that just a good warm up, a dynamic stretching routine, and a good cool down is probably enough on its own for preventing injury and improving recovery from the training session. Um, but that isn't to say that foam rolling doesn't have its place or can't have its place. Um, I think it can actually be helpful for improving range of motion and mobility, especially before certain exercises. Um, so what I would say is to focus on specific areas, especially tight areas that you might have, perhaps rather than just rolling out your whole body, um, if anything, if, if nothing else, uh, just for the sake of time. Um, but with that said, if you were to roll out your whole body, um, there doesn't seem to be any real detriment to foam rolling. Um, so you don't really have that much to lose other than potentially your time, uh, if it gets to be uh, somewhat lengthy, and potentially your energy if it just goes on for too long. Um, so bringing this full circle, uh, my personal experience with foam rolling has actually been quite positive. I found that if I go into a session and I'm feeling a little bit sore, uh, just foam rolling out that area does help to reduce that a bit so I can train a little bit more comfortably. Um, and I just find it helps to sort of like loosen me up uh, before a training session. And of course I do do that foam rolling in addition to my normal dynamic warm up and dynamic stretching routine. And also when I'm doing exercises that require a greater range of motion at the hips, like say a sumo deadlift, I find that foam rolling my inner thighs and glutes can really help me get into a better position for that lift. And similarly, I found doing some foam rolling in my upper back before bench pressing uh, helps me get a better arch and just set up the lift more comfortably. And personally, I spend no more than say five minutes on a foam rolling per workout. And I prefer to do it before training rather than after. Um, however, you'll wanna keep in mind that the studies showing a positive effect on soreness reduction did do it after training. Um, so if you are convinced by that research, uh, you may want to make it a part of your cool down as well. Okay, so with all of that said, I would say that the idea that foam rolling improves recovery is not busted. Um, it does seem to be the case that foam rolling could reduce muscle soreness uh, after training and it might actually improve range of motion without hindering performance, which could actually be quite beneficial in some training instances. With that said, I'm not convinced that there's any real additional or any special benefit to foam rolling that goes above and beyond uh, that of a simple dynamic stretching or dynamic warm-up routine. Um, but I think that we just need more high quality research in order to fully answer that question. Um, so in terms of practical recommendation, I would say not to waste too much time or not to spend uh, too much time on foam rolling. 
Um, if like me, you find that it can help to sort of work out specific tight areas um, and maybe reduce uh, soreness acutely before a training session, um, then I would go ahead and try it out and just be your own scientist on this one and see what works best for you. So that's gonna conclude this week's Myth Bust Monday, guys. I hope that you really liked it. Um, I wanna give a huge shout out to this website. Uh, there's a blog article that I really borrowed a lot from, uh, physicalculturestudy.com, and that was really helpful for helping me out with the historical information in this video. And I also wanna shout out Mass, or Monthly Applications in Strength Sport, uh, which you guys probably heard me talk about before. Um, but basically, it's this huge research review, uh, very comprehensive and very up-to-date. Uh, that covers all of the, the most recent scientific evidence to do with strength training, uh, especially stuff that's pertinent to coaches, um, physique athletes, and strength athletes. Um, I get asked all the time where it is that I find all of this information, and honestly, I think Mass is just one of the best resources out there for condensing all of the research that's published every month down to what I think you really need to know as a physique athlete or a strength athlete um, or a coach. Um, so I've got a link down there in the description if you guys would like to check it out. Um, there's a new issue released every month and this is what I'm reading every month. Um, so if you'd like to support me and at the same time, uh, really increase your knowledge base, um, then I'd strongly recommend checking out the link. Um, so thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you liked the video, please leave me a thumbs up. Uh, if you happen to be new, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And I will see you guys all here next Monday.